we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed we are trying to possess nations we want to transform every sphere of society with values and principles of the kingdom of God. Every sphere of society. Spheres like government and politics. Business and economy. Education and science. Media and culture. Sports and entertainment. You see, but the foundation of the society we seek to transform. Is a family. That is the base of the society. It is the bottom support of the society. Now, so if you want to really possess nations, then we must think of the foundation on which the society itself sitting on. The family is the basic unit of the society. So we are looking at the family life as an endangered institution. Now last week we said that the institution of marriage predates Christianity. Now God ordained marriage for humanity. So marriage is not a Christian ordinance per se. Now it stands to reason that you don't have to be a Christian to have a good marriage. But when we marry as Christians, because the God of marriage is our God, and we have the advantage of scripture and the power of the Holy Spirit, now we should do better. We should really do better. Now when two Christians walk to the altar, to join in holy matrimony, so far as the scripture is concerned, it is a strategic union. God expects godliness and godly offspring from that union. Now what does it mean? Marriage so far as Christianity is concerned. It's not just a relationship between a husband and the wife. It is more than a commitment between two persons. A chance, huh? See, marriage is a covenant of a three-way relationship. In which the couple is accountable to God. Who acts as a witness in the covenant. Now, so marriage is a covenant. A covenant which is defined as a relationship with a non-relative. It's a relationship with a non-relative. That involves obligation. And it's established by oath or a sign. So we are saying that it's a relationship between the husband and the wife and God who has as the witness. See, when the couple carefully and intentionally draw the third party into the relationship, it guarantees 
spiritual blessing. It guarantees real blessing. Then we saying that a generational blessing is guaranteed. Not just a blessing for the wife and the children, but a generational blessing is guaranteed when you also bring the children into the relationship. And we thought that this is well exemplified in the life of Jonathan Edwards. A clergyman and a wife, they had 11 children. But they bequeathed godly legacy to the children. The future descendants. He said last week that 150 years after the man had died. Now certain man, Pastor A. E. Winship, Decided to trace the descendants of this godly man. Then so Jonathan Edwards' godly legacy includes. One U.S. Vice President. One U.S. Vice President. Three U.S. Senators. Three governors. Three mayors. Thirteen college presidents or vice chancellors. Nipa 30 judges. 65 professors. 80 public office holders. And the big one. 100 missionaries. And still counting. So last week I said that it's not so much about the social ladder they climb because there are so people who are from the root of Jonathan Edwards and they will continue to climb. But they are foundation they stand on. Now, Jonathan Edwards' story is traceable to his Puritan upbringing. Jonathan Edwards, na ba kwasem we no e jina senia bebi o free se oye Puritan ni no ehon. And their Christian view of life. Any Puritan for no wong e jina ye e wo Christosumu. It is against this backdrop that I want us to examine the family life as the Puritans saw it. Now, who were the Puritans? Yeah. Don't want to go into all the controversies surrounding them, but mm -hmm. I want to say that they were church reformers who lived in the 16th, 17th century in England. What trans or English am or mine mo be ye in Frisia or ha any and a pim pimne a hensia and a handsong ebrim. Now the quests for godliness. No any pa what precious and what condon yam some pa. Some of them found themselves in North America, New England, to be specific. A binomo eco pie America memoir na wa wa a mantem and a crowd will be our friend or New England. So we want to look at the family life of these Puritans, of whom Jonathan Edwards was also a member. But you see, when we are talking about family life, since family life is derived or stems from the marital life, I want us to firstly look at the marital life 
as the Puritans saw it or how they lived out their family line. See, they had a set of marriage principles. Okay. And one of their greats, Richard Buster, spelled out six common duty of the husband and the wife. And so six common duties of the husband and the wife. And I want to take them one after the other. So number one, if you care. entirely to love each other and avoid all things that tend to quench their love. Now, I worry for no one should be able to love each other and avoid all things that tends to quench your love. Now, when you be able to do one do jano every home. See, sometimes in marriage, some of the partners are so careless. They don't handle the marital relationship well. But these people are saying that try hard to avoid anything that will quench the love. If you know that your spouse is not too comfortable with this kind of act, don't be repeating it. Don't be careless. Try and forge love instead of doing things that will disturb the love between the two of you. Now, the second one is a big one. It is a reason why they built their family life the way they did. And I want us to pay attention to this number two. To dwell together and enjoy each other. Dwell together and enjoy each other. And faithfully join as helpers in the education of their children. The government of the family and the management of their worldly business. Now hold it. Now they say that when you enter into the marital life, dwell together. And be intentional about enjoying each other. And faithfully join as helpers. Now in this, if for them, it is not about man submit. Uh, wife submit, man love. It's not about submission. It is about mutual love that is shared amongst them. Faithfully join as helpers in the education of their children. It is from the Puritans that we have all these big, big schools in America. Oh, the great the Cambridge and all that is from the America. The Harvards. That is where they dwell. So let's take the number two again. The government of the family. The management of their worldly business. Now number three. Especially to be helpers of each other's salvation. The big one. 
to be helpers of each other's salvation. Now, when you enter into the marital life with this mentality, you don't beat your wife. Because what you are doing, I don't like. He said, if you don't like, help her to make heaven, help her salvation. Especially to to be helpers of each other's salvation. To stir up each other to faith. Love and obedience. And good works. To warn and help each other against sin. To warn and help each other Against what we call sin. And all temptations. To join in God's worship in the family. In the family. And in private. So they have a family union. They gather around the Bible and in prayer as a family. And in private, the wife and the husband should also make time for God. And it's not finished. To prepare each other for the approach of death. And to comfort each other in the hopes of Life eternal. Sometimes when spouses are fighting, they even forget that Jesus will come again. They don't have eternal life in their mind. But this one says we are helping your salvation so that we can make it to heaven. I want us to make a difference on this planet. Because in Egypt, when there was darkness in Egypt, there was clear light in Goshen. It was a reason why the Egyptians, some of them decided to follow the Israelites. This is stuck in the memory of their leader Moses. To the extent that one day when God said, I'm not going to go with you, an angel is going to go with you, Moses said, God, what shall bring the distinction between us and them? What shall bring the distinction? There must be a clear distinction between us and unbelievers. Even in our marital life, let the world see we are who say that God gave us something that is good. Number four. To avoid all dissensions. I mean quarrels. Contentions. Strong disagreements in marriage. And to bear with those infirmities. Your physical weaknesses any normal and or ailments and moral weakness or moral failing in each other which cannot be killed. <laughs> Uh, this young man came with a problem and he was very angry. And the wife snores too much. These people will say that. 
the failings and the infirmities that you cannot cure. Okay. One of them too said, the husband is fond of picking the nose. He has been saying it and saying it. He's still picking the nose. And sometimes they will take picture and the man's finger is in the nose. I say, you... <laughs> If the man's finger is in the nose and it's not in the mouth, take it like that. If you from so how on the Debian, you couldn't in Satya and you him so the new moon. Now you come for new cra, Ubona, Nensasha, or not set Nensasha, new universe and a new one. What fun is that? You see, that is why one day the Pharisees asked Jesus this question. We do not that crow for a sea for you beside, yes, to say. Shall a man leave the wife for any or every reason, including picking the nose? See, and Jesus said, no, as for the reasons for <laughs> leaving a wife and divorce, there are a million and one. Even the latest one has not even arrived. No, besides Jesus says, so, okunu beti me jani yere, obribi biya inti ana. And Jesus, eka, achira wan se, se okunu beti jani yere, diya no mo be jina sonu, e do son, ni a e bambo yenye hune ye. I'm sure I've told you about this, um, uh, vehicle, this a passenger vehicle um, with an inscription at the back in some P. We didn't say be a Macaway Achero, a Fidia HM na Kano Yachre in some P. We were neighbors uh, when I was at Agnan Saba. We were neighbors, and this vehicle belonged to one of uh, the people there. Yeah, not your walk Agnan Saba, no car, ya make a one seminar, not a year, or a tea and put them who be Nedia. You have written on it in some P. One day I was going to preach at a certain marriage uh, ceremony. I didn't have any topic, so my topic was in some P. It's a lot of words. Lot of words. Lot of yeah. So if you follow all of them, you will not be able to bear with your spouse's weakness. Bear with one another. Let us work out the little and big problems till we get to what God wants for us in our marriage. Number five. To keep conjugal chastity and fidelity and to avoid all unseemly and immodest conduct with another. Mm -hmm. To avoid all unseemly and immodest conduct with another. Another outside man. Which may stir up jealousy. Very wise counsel. If you are married, you are married. Stay in the marriage. Don't conduct yourself so that your husband or your wife will be jealous of because of your immodest act. Another. And but they added, and yet to avoid all jealousy, which is unjust. Now, what they can say, I thought this one usually referred to the woman, but recently I've changed my mind. Mm -hmm. Some men, they are over jealous. But the women, they have graduated in this <laughs> <laughs> As for them, they have finished the exams. They have graduated. And some men are still also trying to, I mean, they are taking the last question. Mm -hmm. Number six. To help one another to bear their burdens. And then look at this. I want us to read. To help one another to bear their 
burdens yeah, in yeah, poverty. Now, get bob why you are who as was why you are who and this was important. Now, look, this is in the context of marriage. So, when there is poverty in the marriage, we still have to work hard and bear one another. Yeah, yeah, can you? Yeah, our reason and yeah, can you? And he said, Oh, yeah, what are you? And he said, To me, Bob, why are you? And he said, Then they added crosses. And I would do two. So, you say, In Konya, crosses. In Konya, crosses. In Konya, sicknesses. In Yarwa, dangers. Oh, how? To comfort and to support each other. I would like that. Those of us who are married and no, who are not married, what we want to do by this teaching, I've said, is not to teach marriage, but to take from our mind every thought that rises itself against this institution of marriage. <laughs> But go home and brood over this, especially when you are married. Take it one by one, discuss it prayerfully, and then walk it. Walk it. Let it be part of your life. Now, that yeti, will make the difference. Mama, yenti na yensuya na yempuwesa na yensuya ni yempuwesa ni yamama modi nse ebedi hine ewo yankra ni yokuwe na yadi ayekuma. So having seen their view of the marital life. Now let us look at their view of the family life. See, to the Puritan family is more of an extended model in contrast to the nuclear family. See, they had in view not only parents and children, but also servants in the house. Elderly relatives who have been looked after. And sometimes other residents too. Whoever is in the household, it's for them members of the family. Now there's no need to have a prayer meeting with yourself and your children whilst the servant in the house is left out. She is part of the family. The Puritans saw family as one, the basic unit of the society and a little church in itself. It is a little church in itself. See, sometimes all of us pastors and presiding elders, we sometimes leave our church at home and then we go and preside over other people. A big church. But we don't concentrate on the church in the house. How many of you listening to me are people's children? Let me see by show of hand. If you are somebody's child. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you just Obiba. landed on the earth, just put your hands down. But if you are somebody's child, like Apostle Wood and all that <laughs> you are somebody's child now if your children are at home and you leave that church and you are a presiding elder and you go to church you are only speaking to some people's children and you are not paying attention to your children so we are sorry penny na ifi a wo mu no we busua u ja won ho kwan fa nyame asem ama won na u fifie e ko hwe nyame asori no so e wo baabi ana sorry dem a nya wo ye ne se your family is your first church. So they saw it as a church in itself. In the light of this understanding, we shall reflect on two views of the Puritan life. Namely, the family life as a calling and the family as a church and a seminary.
wo we inti asie mu no puritan for ade ye ye pese ye hwe se ye beti biblia se se abusua no eye ofre na esan ye asofodie sua ye for them they saw family life as a calling as if oh this of this man his family life is a calling wo hunu se abusua no eye ofre and the family as a church and a seminary where God trains his people, his workers. And I was saying, a busiano, say a asofudi, a See, so to the Puritan, marriage and family life is a calling. And the Puritan for the mono, a warrior, and the busiano, a yo. I'll just take the first one, the family life as a calling, and then we will pick the second one, the family life as a church and a seminary, God willing, next week. So we are looking at the family life. As a calling. So to the Puritan, marriage and family life is a calling. It is a call to be a husband and a father, a wife and a mother. It is a call to be a husband. Now, if all of us will see being a husband as a call, we would have changed the way we acted towards our wives. It is a call to be a husband and a father and a call to be a wife and a mother. Some fathers, you hardly see them at home. But it's a call to be a father. They believe that one is called to marry and to have children as God's way of maintaining the human race and within the human race, maintaining the church of God. So they also believe that some are not called to marry and to raise children. That is what it means. Now as part of their calling, parents were expected to teach their children obedience to God and to themselves, the parents. You are expected to teach your children obedience to God and to themselves as parents. Now, who was our free Muse? As I said, I will forty two one ma, a win yamis room. Now, one will for now, so what in yamis room and ante. Children, too, were called. Now, who knew this? My Frank Ran, so no, so bear or banner a your friend. And they were to be taught that they were called. You teach the child that you are called to be a child. To learn the twofold obedience from their earliest days. So you, you teach the child that you have a calling to be a child, and then to teach them the twofold obedience that is obeying God and obeying the parents at their earliest days. The children's calling was to be obedient to their parents and masters in terms of their school masters and to do what they command them in the law. Now, this view of life as calling was expanded to other areas of their life. Yeah, other areas of life. Namely, the domestic calling, the life in the family, they see that as a domestic call. The marriage and the family life. And the public calling. This is by way of work and business in the community, in the society. 
So two types of calling. Number one, the domestic call. Number two, the public call. So, so for the Puritan, once he is employed, he goes there as somebody who is called to do the job. He's going to work with his heart. As working for the Lord. Yes, as scripture says in Colossians 3. For this reason, the Puritan expected the generality of their members to be the best in all human endeavors. Look at this like Christians. Taking Christianity to the workplace. So they see work as a core. They even say that when you are able and you don't work, you sin by being lazy. <laughs> yeah. So let's go back to how they affected their spheres with this mentality. Salary, the one in blue. And then when we get to the red, we read together. If it is red, I think that is something like red. So, Puritan expected the generality of their members to be the best in all human endeavors. There, best husbands, best wives, best children, best masters, best servants, best magistrates, best subjects, and in so doing, the doctrine of God might be adorned, not blasphemed. I'll expand on this next week. I'm praying that all of us in our desire to possess the nation to be the best husband the best wife the best children the best workers in every sphere of our society Colossians 3 verse 23 let's go to Colossians chapter 3 let me just add it so that next week we can start something new. Let's take verse 23. Let's read together, ready, go. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Not for human masters, whatever you do. Now, me biara moyono, mumfri okremu enyano se muyama urade na muyama onipa. Whatever you do, do me biara moyono. Marry as if you are marrying the Almighty Himself. Wari se wo wari nyango pongo angaza. Marry remembering that we'll be going to heaven one day. Wari kai se osra hime mu wa yebeko. Then if you are a worker, wuye do my niya. Maybe a laborer. Maybe a director. Work with all your heart. As working for the Lord. Because it's the Lord Jesus you serve. Now let's go back to Colossians 3. I want us to stand up if you can. And then let's read this scripture. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. 24. Let's shout 24. Since you know that you receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Do me a do me a sanisane do me biara moyon mumfri okremu 
enye no se muyema awurade na munyema nipa ifri se munim se awurade nsem na mubenya apegade asaketua na awurade kristo ana mosom ana mosom